What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at taking our WebRTC application that we built together last week, and we're going to add a new feature to it. And that feature is going to be the ability to actually share your screen with the other person who you're actually having a video chat with right now. So before we actually jump into the code, I do just want to take one minute to actually thank all of you who have actually been taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, as you may have noticed, I've just recently hit a thousand subscribers on the channel. Only took me about five or so months to actually do that, which I think is just absolutely bonkers. So truly, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate every single one of you who have watched my videos, liked my videos, commented, and of course, uh, subscribed to the channel. So as a way of sort of saying thank you, what I would like to do is actually go ahead and uh, do a Q&A video um, where you guys pretty much send me your questions and I take the time to actually go ahead and answer your questions. It doesn't have to be a technical question. It can be a technical question. Whatever you want to talk to me about, it's pretty much an AMA, ask me anything. And so the way to actually get your questions over to me is you can pretty much follow me on Twitter. That's how I think I would like to do this. You can find my Twitter handle down in the description box below if you want to go ahead and follow me. My handle is going to be at Coding with Chaim. Follow me on Twitter, send me a DM with whatever question you want to ask me, and then I'm going to, if I am able to answer your question, I'm going to try to choose about 10 or 12 different questions that I can actually answer, and I'm going to go ahead and put it into next week's video for the Q&A uh, subscriber special. So with that out of the way, let's actually go ahead and build this application that's going to allow users to go ahead and share the screen with one another that they're having a video chat application with. So if you'd like to follow along, you can find a link to the starter files down in the description box below. Really, all these starter files are going to be is going to be the application that we actually spent the time building together last week. It'll just be a simple working WebRTC video chat application. So it's already going to be a simple app that actually already allows you to actually have a video chat. And we're just going to go ahead and augment that by adding in the ability to go ahead and share the screen. So again, the link to that will be down in the description box below. So once you actually have the code and you've downloaded or cloned it and you actually have it open in your folder, what you're going to notice is that we pretty much have this sort of structure here. We've got the server.js file, which pretty much houses all of our backend code. And then we've got a folder called client. And as you can see, this is going to be pretty much a create react application. So in order to actually get this application up and running, you will actually have to have two terminals pointing to the actual uh, repository. So one terminal will be open to the sort of root of the application. In my case, that's going to be open to coding with high-end projects slash screen share. This will be the root of my application. This is where all of my sort of server-side code will live. And then to install the dependencies, we're just going to go ahead and run the command yarn. Now, what we'll do is we'll go to the second terminal. This one is once again also open to coding with Chaim projects screen share, but we're just going to go one level further. We're now actually going to go into the actual client folder where we actually have a React application which was bootstrapped using Create React App. So what we're going to do here is also install the dependencies using the yarn command. Now this one might take a minute, so I'll see you when this is done. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, actual dependencies are done installing. So now we can go back to the first terminal and in order to actually get this application up and running, we're gonna go back to the first one where we're in the root of the application, run the command yarn start. That's gonna bring up our uh, server. Then we go to the client folder and then we also run the command yarn start and that's gonna bring up the client side application uh, webpack dev server. Now, as you can see, I already have the application running but I'm actually gonna go ahead and close these uh, tabs out. Let's go to localhost 3000. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new room. And as you can see, um, it's already going to go ahead and show me my own video. I then grab this URL, uh, paste, paste it into another tab. And then now, as you can see, we already have an actual working video chat application using WebRTC. So this is going to be the starting point for our application. So the goal now is actually go ahead and add the ability to have a button right over here that's going to pretty much allow us to share our screen. And then once we actually share the screen, we now need to also have the ability to kind of unshare the screen and come back to a simple working video chat application. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so the one and only sort of file that we need to be uh, worried about is going to be inside of the client folder. We need to go to source, we need to go to routes, and then there's a file called room.js. This is going to be the only file that we need, kind of need to make our changes to get the actual screen sharing ability to work. So one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to come on over to the list of refs that we have specified right over here at the top of the component. And we're going to go ahead and specify a new one called senders, which is going to be equal to a ref that's going to be initialized to an empty array. Once that's done, we can then go ahead to the call user function. So this is the function that we're pretty much run whenever we're actually trying to go ahead and initiate the call to the other person who's already in the room. And now what we're doing here currently is we're pretty much just going to use the, we're going to reference our user stream ref. So this user stream represents the stream that contains both tracks, one for our audio and one for our video. We're then going to go ahead and call the get the tracks method, which will give us an array of tracks. We loop over that and then for each track, we pretty much call the add track method that exists on the actual peer object. So an actual WebRTC peer has a method on it called add track, which pretty much allows you to kind of take your track that you want to go ahead and send over to the other person. And then you use the add track method to kind of attach it to your peer. 
Now, as it turns out, to this actual method of at track, we turn what's known what's known as a sender. The basic idea is that when you're actually calling at track, you're pretty much specifying what it is that you want to send over to the other person. Which track do you want to send when you actually have the connection between the two peers? What are the tracks that you want to go and send to the other peer that you actually have a connection with? So in this case, we're not actually doing anything with the method that at track is giving us in return. The actual sender that we're getting back from at track, not a method, but rather the object that at track is returning, we're not doing anything with it. So the goal for us to net now is to actually go ahead and take these tracks and put them into this senders array that we have right over here. So let me go ahead and make that change right now. Okay, so as you can see, the code pretty much looks very much the same. We're still gonna go ahead and reference our user stream. We're gonna go ahead and call the get tracks method. We're gonna uh, reach over those tracks and we're still gonna go ahead and call the add track method to go ahead and actually attach it to our pair so that we can send it over to the other person that we have a connection with. The only difference now is instead of letting those uh, sender objects just kind of go into the abyss and not actually get captured anywhere, what we're gonna do now is actually go ahead and capture them and put them into our senders array. And we're very soon gonna see why this is important, but for now, the one first change we kind of need to do it in order to actually use this senders array is to capture the senders that are being created from the add track method and then put those sender objects into the actual senders array. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and write the logic to actually go ahead and share our screen. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we have this function called share screen. And here's what we're doing. We're pretty much gonna go ahead and call on the navigator again. We're gonna ask for the media devices to go ahead and give it the display media. And then the option that we're passing in is gonna be equal to, is gonna be cursor equals true. So basically what this says is go ahead and give me the display media. And when you do that, I also wanna actually see the person as they move their mouse. In other words, as I'm sharing my screen and I'm actually using the mouse on the screen that I'm currently sharing, I want my mouse to also be tracked and actually get sent over to the other person who's now viewing my stream. Finally, this is going to be, uh, this promise will resolve with the actual stream object. We're going to go ahead and get the actual screen track because in reality, that's going to be the only track that we have here. So we, go, we pretty much uh, just do stream that get tracks and then give me the actual zero with track. That's going to be the screen track. Now, this is where the actual senders array will come in to be very useful. What we're going to do is we're pretty much going to say senders.current.find. Go ahead and do a find over my current array of senders and then find me the one that's going to have the track that's going to be of type video. And then for that one, go ahead and replace it with my new screen track, right? So that's the idea. In other words, in order, if, I, if I wouldn't have captured my actual tracks, then what's going to end up happening is I won't be able to actually go ahead and replace the one that I have because I don't have actually access to that sender anymore, right? The key is right now, my sender as it is right now is trying to send my own video, my actual face to the other person. But I now want to tell my actual WebRTC object to actually go ahead and replace that sender with a new sender. In order for me to do that, I actually have to keep that reference around. So that's why we actually, actually have to go ahead and create a an array of senders to be able to go ahead and capture all those senders and then be able to replace the ones that we want to go ahead and replace. And so that's what we're pretty much doing right over here. We're just saying, give me the sender that is currently of type video and then replace that track with the new screen track, screen track that we've just created by actually going and sharing our screen. Finally, what we're now doing is since in Chrome, now I will just preface this by saying right now, I have actually not tested this application in anything other than, than Chrome. But in Chrome, as you may have noticed when you might be using something like Google Meets or Google Hangouts, or other different applications within Chrome when you're sharing your screen, there's gonna be like a little a notification at the bottom saying that you are sharing your screen and then you can go ahead and press that button to kind of stop sharing. Of course, that's the button that Chrome is giving you and you don't really have control to actually listen out for the event of when that button is actually gonna go ahead and get fired so that you can stop sharing the screen. But as it turns out, the actual screen track, the actual track itself has a, an event that you can listen out for called unended. And so what we're doing is we're pretty much saying that whenever this screen track is, is unended, it's no longer being used, we can now go ahead and set up some kind of a function that's going to get called in sort of response to the event of whenever this unended event will kind of get raised. And then all we're pretty much going to do is once again do this exact same thing that we're doing right over here. But in this, but this time, instead of actually going to replace our face with the screen, we're going to kind of do the opposite. We're going to simply go ahead and replace the screen with our face. So we're just once again going to go ahead and call the replace track method. But this time, we're going to go ahead and replace the actual screen back with our own face so we can kind of stop sharing the screen. So once again, the reason why we did this is because there's a little button at the bottom that says stop sharing. That's a button that Chrome kind of gives you. It's not part of your actual code. So you can't really listen out for the click handler on that particular button to kind of react to it. So luckily enough, the actual track itself has a method on it called unended, which pretty much is gonna get fired when that button gets pressed. And then when it does, you can go ahead and call your function to do what you wanna do. In our case, of course, what it is that we wanna do is to kind of stop sharing the screen and then go ahead and put our actual face cam back as what we're sending over to the other person with the sender. Now let's actually go ahead and uh, add a button to our JSX. This button will pretty much be the one that we kind of need to click to actually start sharing our screen. So we're just gonna go ahead and say on click is equal to 
uh, share screen. And then one other thing that we're going to do really quickly is to just go ahead and add some basic styling to the actual video tags just so we could have some simple dimensions because what ends up happening is when you share your screen, it actually comes out to be very, very big. Now you might be able to control that with the actual dimension that you asked for here within the Get Display Media, but I figured the simplest thing for us to do right now is to kind of get the basic application working is to just actually uh, use CSS to uh, sort of constrain the dimensions of the actual video tag. So we're just going to make it a height and width of 500 by 500 for each one. Okay, so that does it for the code. If we actually have this working correctly, we should now be able to go back to the actual browser, have a video chat with ourselves in this case, and see if we can actually go ahead and share the screen. Okay, so here we are once again at localhost 3000. I'm going to go ahead and create a room, grab this URL, uh, open it up in a new tab, and the first thing that should happen right now is it should already be in a simple working video chat application. Let's go ahead and press the button to share the screen. A simple sort of modal will pop up asking me what I want to share. We're just going to go ahead and say we want to go ahead and share the entire uh, screen one. Hit the share, uh, share button, come back to the first tab, and as you can see, the actual screen is getting shared. Um, I actually noticed one thing that I did forget to add, so let's go back and add that to the code just to add one more small little feature. What we're going to do is on the actual video tags, we're going to go ahead and add the controls uh, uh, property. This will allow us to actually turn these uh, screens into full screen because of course when you're sharing your screen or when someone is sharing their screen with you, you'd of course like to make it full screen so you can kind of see better. So by adding this controls tag, that'll become a lot easier to do. Okay, so now as you can see, when you hover over it, you can actually start seeing the controls. Let's once again go ahead and share our screen. We're going to share this one right over here. Hit the share button. Come back to the first tab. And as you can see, we can, of course, see the screen. You can see as I'm moving my mouse. Let me actually go ahead and make that a little bigger by actually uh, using the full screen right over here. Make that bigger. And as you can see, I am effectively sharing my screen using WebRTC. Now, the last thing we're going to do is just go ahead and hit this uh, stop sharing button right then over here. As you can see, um, it's, it opened up on my first screen. But because I'm sharing my screen, you can actually see that now. I'm going to hit the stop sharing button and then it kind of goes away and it just shows me. I can, I can of course, minimize this to kind of indicate that now we are currently back to a regular video chat application um, on sort of both tabs. There's no more uh, screen actually getting shared. And so that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video, which will hopefully be my actual 1,000 subscriber Q&A special. Once again, if you want to ask me any question whatsoever, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Coding with Chaim, DM me with your question, and if I like the question, if I feel like I can actually answer it, I will include it in next week's video for the actual uh, subscriber special.